find what you're passionate about find the find a problem that may exist and find a solution to it just just cultivate that idea and mm -hmm. take the first step i feel like so many of us wait for the first like the perfect product idea or the mm -hmm. perfect prototype no mm -hmm. we just gotta we just gotta do it mm -hmm. we just gotta get that idea and go for it mm -hmm. put the research in find what you're passionate about find what's gonna make you happy and content not that it always make you happy because we all right. know that yeah. entrepreneurship is, is a journey that mm -hmm. goes up and down and all of that but um I, I go back to what i've said before just just do it just take the first step not be afraid not be afraid mm -hmm. this is not this is not a place for fear <laughs> Hey, everybody out there in podcast land. This He's is got his radio voice. On this again. is Garrett and Sita. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you talking about me because last time didn't nobody talk about me. Right. You, they're this, like, this, they this, just thought it. Oh, th that's <laughs> what that was? Yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> this is Garrett and Sita here for Eye to Eye Ideal to Invention, a podcast for small businesses, businesses and inventors. Yeah, now you got yes. your radio voice on. Oh my goodness! I think right. I need to put my radio voice. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> this is Miss. She got the radio name too. Right. She don't have a radio face. Mm -mm. <laughs> She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, this is Miss Trinity Simone of Black Five Tribe. No, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have it. So Miss Miss. Um, uh oh, I lost mine. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so Miss Trinity Simone. It, what's your last name, girl? Do you have a last name? I just go by Trinity Simone. Okay. Yes. She's just like, y'all ain't going to find it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so Trinity is the most beautiful young girl I have met in a long time. That's Thank just like you. totally, she's got, I mean, everything together. Yep. And I even like when I first met her, I was like, you know what? I'm all for arranged marriages. Because... <laughs> 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 Didn't know you were going there. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you, to be honest. I saw her and her mom, and then I was just like, yeah. How old are you, sweetheart? <laughs> yeah. So I got which one I want you to marry in there, but no, I don't know if you want to deal get, with that foolishness. That brother need to get right. <laughs> <laughs> and truth be told, right. that brother need to you get need right. need some more years to get right before, yeah. <laughs> before we do that no. to you. But anyway, so Trinity, I met Trinity, the first, for Trinity and her mom. Mm-hmm. Um, at a Shopify meetup, they mm -hmm. were actually sitting in front of me, and I was admiring, of course, their hair. And yep. I was like, "Man, that is beautiful hair!" <laughs> and is it wasn't even is nowhere near as long as it is no. now. <laughs> no. But then when they turned around, and I was like, "Dang!" and they beautiful too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was like, okay, we have got to, um, I've got to introduce myself and the fact that I thought it was mom's business, but then the more we talked about it, it was Trinity's business. And at that time, what was your, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Of Just course. go ahead and say everything that you do and all that good stuff. So yeah, my name is Trinity Simone. Uh, I have my own business, Black Five Tribe, which I actually started when I was 14 years old. Um, I'm 17 years old now, so I'm getting into my third year of business. But I created Black Vibe Tribe with the intention to connect, love, uplift, and build with those deriving from the African diaspora. I've always loved the um, and been taught the history of our people, and I've always admired that. Growing up, I had an infatuation with you're not you know, grown up yet. You're just, yeah. Growing up, I'm, I'm still coming. In. <laughs> you're still while still growing up. Yeah, while still growing up. But um, I've always had an infatuation with where we came from. You know, our people, the revolutionary greats who use their voice for something. Thing greater than them and so I always knew I wanted to continue that legacy and I think Black Vibe Tribe was how I'm, I'm choosing to do that so we did meet at the Shopify meetup because that's what I was there for mm -hmm. and um, yeah when I met you you just exuded this just this like love and support and this you know this energy Aww. this positive energy where we immediately <laughs> <laughs> attracted to you so and then you know obviously as it's you know grown and we've gotten to know each other more it's just been an amazing experience Oh, that's so awesome. Well, we're done. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talked about me. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No. So, um, 
it's one thing to have the, you have that you know vision and mission in mm-hmm. your head. How did you decide to visualize it and bring it actually to something tangible? Right. So it was a lot of research, just a lot of days, nights, you know, talking with my parents even to figure out, okay, I want to create something, you know, I want to be my own boss. That was something that was instilled in me from a very young age. So then it became, how do I do that? And I've always loved designing. I've always had just like this passion and, and you know, this create creativity to just want to create my own designs, create my own statements. And then, you know, the easiest thing at the time was, let's just put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> let's mm-hmm. see how that sells. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a saturated industry, but then that gave me even more of a drive of how am I going to make myself stand out? Um, what am I going to do different? And so I think it was just researching how to really break through in the industry, um, getting my designs together, finding out what I was going to do as far as drop shipping goes, as far as how I was going to fulfill everything, as well, how I was going to ship everything, um, the upfront cost behind that. So I think it was just putting a lot of research and time and energy into it and just taking the first step. I'm a firm believer in just going for it mm-hmm. because if you never take the first step, then you can never continue that marathon. So. Wow. Okay, so good Lord. As a fort, I'm going back to when you were 14. Mm-hmm. So long ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So long ago. Right. Um, how? Because see, see, not every 14 year old has that um, wisdom. No, she's got the ancestors looking down on her. Oh, I, I mean, how how are you how are you doing everything between 14 and 17? There's a lot that goes on mm-hmm. in a teenager's mm-hmm. thought process, right? But you seem to be very grounded and focused mm-hmm. on what you want to do. So how, explain to us, how do you I owe that all that? to my parents. <laughs> to, I was about to, com- say, I'll say, to dad be, needs right. to come on to over here and answer To be answer completely that honest with you, they laid the foundation, you know, in all of me and on all of my siblings, they laid this um, very solid structure to remind us of who we are, where we derive from, what we're capable of, and just staying focused and know that anything we want to do, we're capable of doing it. And so I think with that foundation, what they've taught us, it was just something that was ingrained in me from a very young age. And then I had the, you know, I have the pleasure of coming from that foundation, but also being 14, I was homeschooled at the time, which played into having the flexibility to allow me to run a full business. And, um, you know, I still have that same flexibility and foundation that I look back on and I'm very thankful for. And I would like to think the ancestors are looking down yes, on me. Yes, they and, are. You know, allowing I mean, me to walk the path. You can see it. You can feel it. Right. You it can is. feel it. I'm like, I need just two of them ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> can I borrow just two <laughs> 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 to shine the light on the two that we got? <laughs> Boys are different. Boys develop a little bit later. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's hers. I'm just looking up that that poster you stole off like Jaden's oh, wall. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. the first thing. <laughs> that was the first one of the first items we got from her. And see, that's the, at 14. Come on. Yeah. That's this. You know, this is why. Don't just, make me cry now, right? guys. <laughs> that's why I love Miss Trinity Simone. That's why I was like, I was literally like stalking her on the phone now when are you going to be on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) it's like i'm not going to let you not be on the podcast but anyway so we're going to take a break and when we come back we are going to talk to miss trinity about how her business and how her life has evolved since she started black vibe tribes at 14 years old Mm -hmm. that's what i want to know i'm curious i'm really really right you know was it curious minds want to know what is it Mm mm-hmm we're going to stick with that. That's what yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back in a few seconds from with From Idea to Invention with Miss Trinity Simone and C. Dan Garrett. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Listen, I got a puff up in my hair and it's clear. It's clear. You try not to interfere with the facts I'm about to share. People love, love it. it. They love it because there's nothing to compare. And when something does appear, it's not real. It's a fake. Have no fear. Yeah. It works with dreads and works with curly hair. You won't go through the wear and tear of using bands. Oh, yes, I swear you might just have a love affair. And I'm not saying that you should be well aware. The thing might end up in your thoughts and in your prayers. The perfect 
ponytail, no stress, no pain, no holy grail. Tired of messing around with these bands, go take a hike, go hit the trail. The perfect ponytail, no stress, no pain, no holy grail. Tired of messing around with these bands, go take a hike, go hit the trail. I wish you to hear, listen, and this one is clear. For all of you color people, we wanna see all that vibe here and twinkle. John, wake up, fuck, been done. This is the one who begun. The dreams have became the bronze of the brain, the change of the game, the company name. The perfect ponytail, no stress, no pain, no holy grail. Tired of messing around with these bands, go take a hike, go hit the trail. The perfect ponytail, no stress, no pain, no holy grail. Tired of messing around with these bands, go take a hike, go hit the trail. Love you. Hey everybody out there in eye to eye land, this is Garrett and Sita for Idea to Invention, a podcast for small business and inventors. Uh, we are so blessed to have with us the beautiful, the inspiring. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, the awestrucking. Awestrucking? Sounds good to me. We'll roll with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm awestruck. awestruck right. I, 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 but she's an awestrucker. <laughs> she's an awestrucker. <laughs> and you're an awestrucky. Oh, well, there you go. Miss Trinity Simone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. We love to have fun on this podcast. Mm-hmm. So we were we were we ended the last segment with you kind of giving us a overview of who you are. But we want to know, um, talk to us about your business and, mm-hmm. and how it's grown and how it's maturing and, and what it, what does it have you doing these days? Right, so I'm currently in the beginning of my third year of business, the first quarter I would say, and something that I'm very proud of is how Black Vibe Tribe has been able to organically grow. So within the first year, kind of into the second year, I did find myself in a position where because I was going through a dropshipping company, because I was having to, you know, that would eat up a, a lot of profit. Mm-hmm. It was almost as if the money I was making, the money, the, the profit I was making, it was going back into reinvesting into the company. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've been able to make the switch within my second year, now coming into my third year, where I'm fulfilling myself, printing myself, shipping myself, I've been able to see that profit margin increase, which I'm you know, very proud of. And I think within the business, something I always strive to go back to is the tagline of to connect, love, uplift, and build. So to not only you know, have this just be an apparel company, I like to say it's so much more than a lifestyle brand, it's an actual lifestyle. Right, and there so, you go. Mm. You know, I just really am aiming to get more involved in the community. That was really. a t-shirt right there, if you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm gonna write that down. It's a lifestyle. Take it I like yes, that. I like that. Yeah, but I get the first one. (laughs) I got you, I got you. (laughs) Yeah, so I've just really been able, I've been really blessed to watch it organically grow and evolve and um, grow to be something so much bigger. And that has been, that has been amazing. And I've seen my network expand. I just, you know, even with you all, just to be able to connect with individuals like yourself who've been able to endlessly support me and show, you know, my my passion project, this love, um, you know, it's just been, it's, it's been very, it's like I'm at a loss for words, but it's just, it's been a blessing. It's mm-hmm. been amazing. Um, it's been an amazing experience that I'm truly grateful to have. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Now, as far as your, your products that you um, sell, that mm-hmm. you retail, because of, so your, <clears throat> excuse me, the website is blackvibetribe.com. Mm-hmm. And you said you started with t-shirts. I did. So, and then how many designs did you start with? I started with an abundance of designs. I think I just went a little crazy with the creativity, which is like, I'm gonna put everything up there. Uh, but I did start with the, I would say maybe 20 different designs just to like throw it out there. Mm-hmm. But I did start with t-shirts and because I was going through a drop shipping company and it gave me all these possibilities and you know, things to explore. I started with t-shirts, mugs, pillows, posters, just anything I could put a statement on, I did. Mm -hmm. As I've gotten into my second year and third year, I've been able to work with international manufacturers where I'm able to explore getting duffel bags done. So now that's something I offer. I Mm -hmm. offer a duffel bag that also is a backpack that you can, you know, take straps out and change it like that, uh, which is very cool. I've got my melanin abundant glasses, which is, you know, just being able to expand my product line Mm -hmm. And, you know, switch it up a little bit so mm-hmm. it's not just a T-shirt brand mm-hmm. has been something I'm really proud of. And it's very exciting for me. So what are, what are your best sellers? It's so it's great. I'm going to be completely honest in saying it's really hard to pick the top selling item because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, because each T-shirt has a statement that you know mm-hmm. can hit home for different reasons, I find that people just buy what 
what they, they relate feel. to, right, what, they, what they, feel. they relate to, right. I will say that one of the top sellers in my mind and one that has been doing really well and that a lot of people relate to is the Defend Black Womanhood. Mm -hmm. It's such a powerful statement. Mm -hmm. It's such a universal statement for our community because when I say Defend Black Womanhood, I'm saying protect us. I'm mm -hmm. saying respect us. I'm saying when it comes to something such as black women in childbirth, you know, that's, that's a... <sighs> That's such a prevalent issue. Oh, so protect us in that in, in that state. We're when dying more than it's insane. Uh, races and when it comes to black, when it comes to childbirth, it that is. just blows my mind. But mm -hmm. anyway, when it comes like, to the, hmm. it is. It's it's a very well, I mean, prevalent I, issue. The question that comes to my mind is: I, I see an evolution of. You have a, a lot of statements, a lot of social mm -hmm. impacting statements. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever have an interest in politics? You know, maybe not politics per se, but I've always had an interest with the criminal justice industry mm -hmm. and just how it operates. And, you know, people have told me, go into law, go into this, go into that. In my, in my mind, how I just kind of feed into that passion or feed into that interest is just by the statements I put out there or even mm -hmm. with my organization with the youth will be all right I'm still it's still very relevant to the criminal justice industry I've just find a I just found a mm -hmm. way to adapt it to who Trinity is okay so. all right because you have a powerful voice mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. um, you might send me home now thinking about it, you know, <laughs> thinking about I mean it, it, your presentation and what you have to say mm-hmm has such content it has such meat um she's captivating and it's it's like yeah, we're all yeah. just sitting here waiting and, and, and that, that's that, that's why i asked you know what, mm -hmm. what what are your your interests right as, mm -hmm. as you keep on going down this journey have you thought about so like one of the, the voice of your social one of the messages? people who i really like did really does inspire me is brian stevenson who's actually my birthday twin just fyi <laughs> <laughs> yeah november 14th yeah so that's someone who inspires me because he was and involved to tell us because for those who don't know for those who don't know brian stevenson they actually just based a movie off him so right, just mercy right. that's mm -hmm. who you know he wrote a book just mercy and that's what the movie's based off his life and all of that but um he started his own organization the equal justice initiative where he helps those who you know are innocent kind of prove that that they are innocent he works for them he works for the people mm -hmm. and that's something i've always respected where he works in a, he works in the criminal justice industry which is this very this is it's a very structured system that wasn't really set up for us mm -hmm. but to be able to be someone who spearheads it and kind of flips it yeah. in mm -hmm. a way and really works for the people as opposed right. to working for the system mm -hmm. that's like if i did go into politics or the criminal justice industry or something like that that's, that's what i would what picture do. myself doing i can see that yep very easily i can see mm -hmm. that wow um so getting back let's kind of come come back to your business mm -hmm. and um, you mentioned that you've had some shifts, right, mm -hmm. in the last year or so of of uh, getting away from some outsourcing to doing things on your own. Mm -hmm. um, what have what has been your biggest learning of that process? It's a good question. <laughs> the biggest learning curve, I guess, for me. Hmm. That's a good question. Because it's like, you know, entrepreneurship, you fail, you get back up. Right, You know, it's right. like that keep whole going. thing. Has anybody, anything been more of, more of a, a little bit more of a struggle than... I think just having the tenacity and drive to drop something, such mm -hmm. as drop shipping, because the thing about it, drop shipping, they fulfill, they print, right. you they give them design, they do everything. Like, mm -hmm. And then you make that switch of investing into your know, own machinery, own equipment, and now you do everything. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, whoa, this is a right, lot more right. than you originally <laughs> <t> anticipated. <laughs> right. And so I feel like that was the switch of just learning how to adapt to that change of, okay, I'm stopping this, this is what I'm putting in place, and this is what I have to do to be successful in it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where the drive, the determination just kind of picks back up and I have to just do it you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. it wasn't really it wasn't really an option in my mind because when I was doing the dropshipping company and when I was looking at my profits and how I was going to be growing throughout the years I said it just doesn't make sense anymore mm -hmm. you know I'm I have to I have to do something better right, than this I have to put right, a better system the next in step place in the process exactly mm -hmm. so I had to take that next step and it was a very it was a it was a it was a learning curve it was mm -hmm. something it was that hurdle that I had to get over and uh I just I just jumped it <laughs> and kept going, you know. Awesome. So how how does family play a role in the business? My team is my parents. They okay. they are my everything and they have supported me relentlessly. Can you say that again? I just want to hear it. 
which part do my parents are my everything yes. <laughs> yes they are they truly are you know they have supported me and i feel like even from the very first stages of just saying you can do anything mm -hmm. i feel like that foundation alone just knowing that you know despite the doubt despite what i may face just knowing my parents have are able to be there and to push me and to support me and to pour everything into what i'm doing that's just powerful beyond measure so i always say before i am the entrepreneur before i am the founder of this or that then yeah i'm a family person mm -hmm. my family is my everything they're my number one supporters they're my biggest fans they're the people who allow me to feel like i'm anything i it, the the sky's the limit mm -hmm. and even further beyond that you mm -hmm. know that's that's really who when you see my family, you see why I am mm -hmm. what I am, or mm -hmm. who I am what I who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is awesome. So you're you're not the only one making the t-shirts and doing your. So are your no, family? they they are my, they are literally my support system. It's funny because I always say that we have this little structure in place. Mm -hmm. So you know, my mom she's helping with marketing and she's doing research as well. And you know, we're sitting down having our own little meetings mm -hmm. talking about what's the next step for Black Vibe Tribe. I'm printing shirts. My dad's the one who makes the post office runs, runs for me. <laughs> yeah, so you know, we have this whole system in place. And at the end of the day, um, I feel like what's so amazing about it is I know that when I look to my left, when I look to my right, it's people I trust. It's mm, people. That makes a huge it, it, difference. Exactly. And you know, it just has really played into where Black Fab Trap has been able to go, just knowing that that support system, that team mm -hmm. is in place. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, n how much more time do we got, Isaac? I hear the music. Two more, two more, but in this segment. Okay. So, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, I want to talk about your foundation. Okay. Because that, that is, um, it, the, tell me the name of it again. The youth will be all right. Yes. The youth will, will be, be all, all right. right. Yes. We need to dig deep into that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we come back, we will talk about how the youth are going to be all right with Miss Trinity Simone here on From Idea to Invention with Sita and Garrett Lash. <laughs> We are back with From Idea to Invention, and we are here talking with the inspirational, beautiful, captivating Miss Trinity Simone of Black Vibe Tribe. And she is now going to tell us about her foundation, which is the children will be all right, but the all right is. All right. What? The youth. The youth. The youth. The youngins? What? Yes. <laughs> you just chopped the it all youth, up. I sure did. Just oh like I God. said, pralines the other time. The youth um, will the be. The youth will be all right. But explain the difference. It's not I. It's all. It's all right. right. A L L W R I T E, like writing, and that is for a reason. Mm -hmm. So the youth will be all right is an initiative I came up with because I've always been infatuated with the criminal justice industry, and I've always had a love for writing. I'm I love all things word and how we're able to weave them and intertwine them to make something so impactful, so beautiful. And so what I do with the youth will be all right is I donate composition notebooks to incarcerated youth. Oh my goodness! It's something that is very. It's what I want. It's heart, very right. close to my heart because I've seen how writing can help somebody out right. of you know tough times. I've seen how writing, um, even if I look back to the revolutionary greats from Malcolm to Mom and I, like just all of these individuals who are able to use paper and a pen or use their word to spark a whole generation. Mm -hmm. So when I do this, I'm giving this platform, this outlet of self-expression for these kids to utilize. I hate to say I'm giving them a voice. I'm simply amplifying, amplifying it. Amplifying it, right. Yeah. Right. And so when I give them these notebooks, whether they want to write, whether they want to sketch, whether they want to vent or draw something, you know, that could be the next individual who goes on to be the next biggest screenwriter mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the poet or someone who will go on to impact more people. Mm -hmm. So that's been something I've been doing. I've donated to date, I want to say a little over 700 notebooks. I do it. It's not just limited to Atlanta or where we live, but I, I ship them nationwide. Mm -hmm. I've had this support system from individuals who found out about it, who then 
you know, will make monetary donations or make or actually send me notebooks to take to the youth. So that's mm-hmm. been something that I'm just very grateful for. How it's Can grown. you tell us some of the places that you've donated to? Yeah. So there's a why there's these things called YDCs and RYDCs. So the RYDCs are regional youth detention centers and the YDCs are the youth development campuses. So RYDCs are usually where kids go when they're still on their their trial or what they're going through. So it's mm-hmm. like where they it's like a place they stop they don't stay there forever Mm -hmm. ydc's are actually where they stay to serve their time okay so i've donated to atlanta ydc metro ydc um i just donated 53 notebooks to terrell ryDC eastman ryDC so these are these are institutions that are that serve different counties Mm -hmm. and so i've also donated to some places in baltimore I've donated to, we took a trip to Alabama for my little brother's football game, and we stayed there an extra day, so I took notebooks to uh, a YDC, a RYDC in Alabama. I've hit, where else have I done? I know Baltimore, I know Alabama, I know I've hit many of them in Georgia. So I think those are the three. Oh, in Florida, Miami. Okay. I, I did my, I, went, I sent notebooks to Miami, so those are the places I've explored. Oh, and by the way, okay. I have to say this as well. Mm-hmm. I just partnered up with an organization called Transformative Teach um, that works to amplify the voices of not only the youth and the teachers who are teaching them to destruct and dismantle the oppressive systems in place as far as like the school to prison pipeline and things like that. So we've actually partnered up where they're doing notebook donation drives in Colorado to extend the work I'm doing with the initiative. So that is amazing. Yes. So I'm really happy about that as well. So do you get to actually um, interact with the youth or talk to the youth? So that's something that I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually started the organization when I was 16 years old. So this is like my year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've just been donating them. I've just been shipping. I would go in, drop them off, and then walk out. But now um, with Terrell RYDC and Eastman RYDC, something that I'm venturing is I'm actually going to go in, speak to the youth, pres- get hand them the notebooks, and present them to them, mm-hmm. and speak with them. So yeah, I'm really I'm, excited about that. Yeah, that's the missing piece right there. It's awesome. like that's that just the, the presence alone and them mm-hmm. seeing somebody that they can identify with mm-hmm. and that cares about them that they don't know personally. Right. That's awesome. Thank and you. someone that they can aspire to. Right. I mean, that's because, you know. It, it you need some delivery boys because I got two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carry some boxes. <laughs> Just go, let's do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get them. Right. You sign <laughs> them up for right. something. <laughs> Why should sign us up for you? Right. Just be quiet. <laughs> Just be quiet. Just listen. <laughs> listen and do. <laughs> so as an entrepreneur, Mm-hmm. How, um, what, what, what advice would you give a, a young entrepreneur? Find what you're passionate about. Find the, find a problem that may exist and find a solution to it. Just, just cultivate that idea mm-hmm. and take the first step. I feel like so many of us wait for the first, like the perfect product idea or the mm-hmm. perfect prototype. No, mm-hmm. we just gotta, we just gotta do it. Mm-hmm. We just gotta get that idea and go for it. Mm-hmm. Put the research in, find what you're passionate about, find what's gonna make you happy and content. Not that it'll always make you happy yeah, because we all right. know that yeah. entrepreneurship is, is a journey that mm-hmm. goes up and down and all of that. But um, I, I go back to what I've said before, just just do it, just take the first step. Not be afraid. Not be afraid. Mm-hmm. This, is not, this is not a place for fear. <laughs> Ain't that Girl. the truth? <laughs> yeah. So have you, I mean, out of all the contacts that you've made and out of all the relationships that you're building, um, how have you, as an entrepreneur, how have you seen your level of access to what you need to make Black Tribe? I feel like successful? that's the most, that's what I'm most grateful for as far as being an entrepreneur in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I feel like Atlanta has become this Black Mecca almost of entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and all the access we do have. The right so, time, right, yeah, right so place. I think back to like the Russell Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm they are doing something that's incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, it already started with, you know, Herman J. Russell's legacy, which is already phenomenal mm-hmm. in itself. But now that they're providing a place for entrepreneurs to walk in and say, I have an idea. Right. And being able to actually sit down and construct it. And that's that's the access right there. Mm-hmm. You have organizations yeah. such as We Buy Black, who uses a social platform to put the businesses and really push them in, out there. Um, the Village Market, Atlanta, you know, how they're able to create this space for entrepreneurs to kind of, and then y'all, look at y'all. <laughs> y'all are out here <laughs> doing you. it, connecting us, and that's, you know, that's something amazing. So we do have the access, and I think that's furthermore why we need to take the first step right. because and there are so many resources. And in Atlanta, it's like we're realizing we're more powerful together. We are. Than apart, and that's, yeah. the, that's the thing that it's like, man, 
we could only figure that out so long. It's like, but now being collaboration right, over collaboration is right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's another shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what was collaboration it? <laughs> over competition? Oh, that is another shirt. You coming up with all these shirts? <laughs> no, she <laughs> did it. We or did we do that one together? We did it together. Okay. <laughs> Great minds think alike, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So is there anything else that we should know that's coming from Miss Trinity Simone? Yes. So I'm an artist, a musical artist. Yes. So okay. I have you three sing singles out there. Sing for you all. You sing <laughs> yeah. for me in my office. And I, I was did. just like, I, I think I did. I did shed a tear. I didn't know you sang. Sing and rap. She's a whole package. I told you now you after this, you're going to be for a rainy <laughs> yeah. marriage too. <laughs> <laughs> So you can, you guys can find me. My name is Trinity Simone. I don't have a fancy rap name, <laughs> but Trinity Simone, and I'm on all streaming platforms. I have three singles that I've put out: Crack Concrete, False Prophets, and Black Woman Nature. So check them out. Really? Yes. <laughs> He's shocked. Oh, shocked. I didn't know. Yes. Now I know. Now you now know. You know. Mm -hmm. And stay in the know. Wow. Oh my goodness. You okay, see why I was like, well, she's got it right. He's like, I'm taking. He's like, it I'm, I'm typing it in right now. <laughs> So how long have you been, um, how long have you had your songs on? So I, so like I said, always been a writer. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a conversation that I had with my parents and my sister. They said, put it to a beat. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> and okay. so I remember finding a beat and just like, cause I always did spoken word and poetry. Mm -hmm. So I was basically like putting my poetry to, you know, the beat. Something that didn't, that didn't work for me though, because I, I love music so much and I love beats. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up writing to the beats as opposed to just putting what I've already okay. written to the beats. Okay. And so then I started doing freestyles, one minute freestyles on Instagram. That picked up traction. And I was like, oh, people like this, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. People are interested in this. And then just, you know, always wanting to just go for the next thing. Um, I went to the studio and I purchased a beat and all of that. And I wrote a whole song and I, put, I put it on a streaming just platform. Like, My I first, wanted to do it and yeah, I did it. My first single was Crack Concrete, and that did really well, and I was really happy about it. No, wait, my first single was False Prophets. Yep, first single was False Prophets. I put mm -hmm. that out there, did really well, did another song, and then I did Black Woman Nature. <laughs> and then, you know, it's just something that, it was just a passion of mine, it's just an mm -hmm. interest, so I just. Now, where do we find it? it, on iTunes, or on what do you, where do you Apple find Music, it? Apple Music, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all SoundCloud, those, YouTube, all, all the above, above. <laughs> yeah covering all on the bases. way home i'm like right yeah, yeah. yeah. do we have one minute can she like, do a freestyle <laughs> oh we got minutes. two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> like, that's a whole song right there that's a whole, <laughs> not to put you on the spot but <laughs> um i could i could definitely i could do one of the songs i've released already because i do have i do have the intention to release the album so i can't drop no, no like that right now we'll have we'll have the, the um the whole party where the lights are dim where she's gonna drop her new stuff let me get my let me get my phone <laughs> y'all don't put me on the spot now okay let's see i'm gonna let y'all pick y'all want to hear crack concrete false prophets or black woman nature either the first or the last i'm gonna let you do black woman nature black okay. woman nature okay you want me to do it I, I guess i'll have to do it without a beat that's okay just, okay my brothers, why we let our women cry and weep, watching the shots, America, though be cut and cheap. They be used in our sisters, they abused in our sisters, and how y'all any better if you ain't rooting for your sisters? You bloom from a black lotus flower, encapsulated in your mama's melanated black power. I'm speaking words that you need to hear, cause I look around and see a lack of love you bear for the women you came from, the blackness you stem from, the women who will carry your burdens, care for you even when you're down or hurting. It's our black woman nature, you see? All we ask is let us be the ones whose love you see. Protect us, respect us, but never neglect us. We're power, we're freedom, we're building up. We're power, we're freedom. Now we gotta stand with our people. This one is for the women, baby girl, I see the vision. You're so driven in the world that be plotting on your collision. So I'm here to say you're more than a body figure or the reflection staring back at you within the mirror. You transcend all of the stereotypes. Every black woman's a queen. We come in various types. Nefertiti deriving Cleopatra-esque soldiers. Strike a woman, strike a rock. We stand as one, you strike the boulder. Never let a man diminish your worth. Inflict any hurt, disturb any goals you affirm. If he don't appreciate you, leave that boy at the door. But don't write our brothers off because of what happened before. Believe in the black structure, a king, queen, and their seed. A powerful creation they don't want the world to see. 
Cause the truth is black love is full of beauty. Most powerful thing I've seen, ha, absolutely. Protect us, respect us, but never neglect us. We're power, we're freedom, we're building a, we're power, we're freedom. Now we gotta stand with our people. <laughs> Look at that. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. That is, let's see. Just Y'all better cop right. that. No. <laughs> He's right. Just right, drop the mic. The mic. Mm, that was awesome. So thank, thank you. you so much for sharing. Thank you. Oh, that was good. Are we, is this the last one? Nope. Next one we is. We got one more segment? Mm hmm. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Perklimped? <laughs> but we will be back. That's we should have saved that for last. So we but we will be back with Miss Trinity Simone to see what other jewels she's mm. gonna give us before she leaves. Yeah. This is Sita and Garrett from Idea to Invention. I'm speechless. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>This is Garrett and Sita with Idea to Invention, a podcast for small business and inventors. And we are so fortunate to have Miss Trinity Simone in the building. If y'all were <laughs> listening on that last segment, I won't charge y'all for that. <laughs> but we get to say we knew her win. We knew her win, right? <laughs> I want some backstage passes. That's right, another right, show. right. Um, just a, a phenomenal young lady, um, a presence. Um, if, if you if you do not know her, you need to get to know her. You can go to blacktribe.com. Black Vibe Tribe. Black Vibe, I'm sorry, my bad. Blackvibetribe.com. Mm -hmm. We don't um, want you to end up in the wrong place. Right, yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. You can also find her, her musical talents on display on any streaming uh, platform, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, um, YouTube, mm -hmm. YouTube as well, um, as Trinity Simone. You need to, to get to know who this young lady is because she is one of our rising stars. Um, you, you, you rarely get the opportunity to come in contact with greatness and, um, and seeing the glimpse of what someone can do and what God is moving them to do. And yet today we've been experiencing that. Right. Thank you. And so Trinity. First and foremost, like and live phenomenal. live in living color. Yeah. Just it's just at all. Right. You know, and, and you know, um, so and, and we're we're blessed enough to be parents of sixteen, almost soon to be seventeen year old boys and an eight year old. And as a parent, mm -hmm. um, there are times where you're like, Okay, God. Is this a joke, really? Are you? I mean, this stress. It can't be. This it, it can't. <laughs> it, it can't be. <laughs> um, and 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 you pray and, and you you hope and you wish and for those glimpse of of of, of who they are, mm -hmm. right? Of 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 their of their brilliance, of what they're capable of doing. 
um, and you give us parents hope. Right. I that, appreciate that. And, and, it, it, and, and it really ties to, you know, your foundation when you say that um, the youth will be all right. And mm -hmm. everybody keeps telling us, man, your boy's going to be all right. Yeah, man, everybody does because I'm like, tell me again. Everybody keeps telling you your boys will be all right. And, <laughs> and you've helped confirm that whether you realize that or not. Thank you. You have helped confirm that. So I thank you. Thank you very, very much. I do. I have a question. Because, see, as, as we were going through and you're talking and you're talking about your business, you're talking about your foundation, you're talking about your passions, my mind instantly goes to all these different paths. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to know, where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Five to ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always look, I always, I'm one who always looks to the future. Like, what am I going to do next, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, with the mindset that op the opportunities are limitless almost, that I can just, you know, explore the passions that I want to explore. The question that comes up now is college or business, you know, <laughs> college, what, what college are you going to go to? Are you going to go to college? And though I don't like to ever say like no to something before mm -hmm. exploring it, I will say that I just want to explore it the the journey of entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. see where it can take me because i've already been able to see the growth it's it's you know it's you know had and how it's evolved so i want to be able to pour into that and see how it further evolves in five to ten years i really want to have a global impact mm -hmm. outside. i was gonna say you were too big for college i'm sorry <laughs> her presence is too do you know what i mean does that sounds crazy but it's like she's uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's okay i, I don't know if it's, I don't know it's, if it's the fact that that she's too big for college. She's, I don't I, want college to stifle the, the what do you call it, the um, organ not organizational aspect of college. It's like they fit you in a box. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And she's way bigger than that box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's her, her <laughs> institutionalized, like, you know what I mean? But, but, but the good thing about Trinity, and you correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is that you're you're aware of wanting to experience the journey, um, and what I mean by that is y you you're willing to learn from all different aspects, right? And mm -hmm. so, to where you were going, see that college will, and has, and some colleges have a tendency to to put you in a limitation of what you're going to learn, mm -hmm. right? And say, you're going to be on this path and we're going to teach you X, Y, Z. So you can go do this. So you can mm -hmm. go do this. But your thinking is beyond just being mm -hmm. in an X, Y, Z mm -hmm. type of path. Um, and that's what I think it is. I feel like when it, when it comes to college, I feel like there are obviously careers that are necessary where you have to go to college, the lawyers, the doctors, the this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like those individuals who do venture something like a business you know, degree or things like that, I feel like because of the society we live in, they need workers for the individuals who are capable of oh, being the mastermind. Oh, well, didn't we just talk about that? <laughs> so, you know, going into something, you know, venturing for a business degree, they don't necessarily take you on that journey right. for you to start your so own business just, but, but instead to work for to somebody work else for the yeah the higher mm -hmm. ups who have their own businesses so i understand what you're saying about me already being in the mentality that i would create my own mm -hmm. and just taking that information but also knowing that i have the foundation i have now to be able to venture that myself yeah you know yeah you so attend and take what you right need so from there's these that other these aspects of mm -hmm. life or those certificates of life or whatever right but not end up owing hundreds and thousands of dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, so going back to what you said of just where I see myself in five to 10 years, just venturing entrepreneurship, I do want to have a global impact where I'm still implementing my tagline of I want to connect, love, and uplift and build with those deriving from the African diaspora. So venturing to see what that looks like and um, be, like, being more involved in the community across, you know, not only our nation, yeah. but all of us, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and really leaving us with a positive impact. I know anything I do, I want to be able to cultivate change. I want to be able to continue this legacy to build generational wealth, to do all of the things that my ancestors have been able to do, just to continue to continue that, to provide the next set of resources for the mm -hmm. next set of entrepreneurs who want to come up and do something greater yeah. than what I'm doing, I hope, you know? Right, exactly. You, you, mm. Go ahead. No, I was, was, was going to say that, no. You've provided so much um, information today. And if there's anything that 
I would ask for you to take away mm-hmm. is um, to continue to be you, mm-hmm. continue to speak your truth and everything else, the global reach, That'll come. the contact people, will, it, it, what, what, will, God will, what will happen is God will, if you stay true to that, mm-hmm. it will become a magnet and it will attract the right people, mm-hmm. right? Because, you know, you can attract mm-hmm. people but you want it to attract the right, right people. people. Of course. So if your spirit stays pure, stays focused and level, yes, the world is your oyster. Mm-hmm. Noted. And, and, <laughs> Thank and you. And you will do amazing things. And yes, when they say our first black female president is Simone, is Trinity Simone. Hey. I'm in the uh, front seat it. with my J. Crew coat on. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I'm in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just uh, my seat is right there with my name on it. <laughs> yes. I'll let him sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, thank you. I no, really appreciate awesome. that. You're very welcome. This so, if very there's awesome. any, anything in parting that you would want um, any aspiring entrepreneur, any aspiring small business person to know, um, what would you want to tell them now? That you're capable of doing anything that you just need to have the ambition, the drive, the tenacity to really take that first step and tackle it head on. Mm -hmm. This Um, is, this is not easy by any means, but it's what makes it a little fun, you know? (laughs) I like that. Right, makes it a little bit of fun. A little bit of fun, (laughs) yes. So I'm I'm like, I'm in awe. I'm just so glad you were able to come and I know you're busy as all. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity. So welcome. Thank you, Dad. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, <for> Dad. Bringing <laughs> her. <laughs> and um, you know, hopefully we can do this again. And even the next time you come, it's you know, I just got back from Rwanda and right. da, 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 da. so <laughs> goals, right, right. Yes. So, but like again, thank you uh, for being one of our wonderful guests on From thank Idea you. to Invention, a podcast for small businesses and inventors. And as we always say, in ending, in parting, in parting, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. Peace, (laughs) y'all.